Hello, welcome to Confidently Creative. I'm your host, Jason Ward. This is the podcast that helps all creatives become more confident. Subscription is absolutely free. Sponsors are always welcome. And please feel free to share the show, leave us a review, let me know what you need, or just follow us on Instagram at Jason Ward Creative. Enjoy. Today, I'm going to talk about creative decision making, and I'm going to help you look at how you make the decisions that affect your creative output and what then your audience experiences. I'm going to help you enhance your creative decision making process to ensure that what you create is authentically you, it's attractive to an audience, and it's commercially valuable. Now, as creatives, we can spend a lot of time worrying about what an audience might want. And when I say an audience, I mean anyone who's interested in our creative work. We might have created a group of paintings that didn't sell or we've done a show that the audience didn't seem to care about. And right then, our natural response is to panic. It's very easy. We've all been there. It's very easy to tie ourselves in knots, trying to think forwards, backwards, sideways about how an audience might respond to what we create and who might want to pay for it. And we often find ourselves making creative and personal compromises as we aim to please our audience or our imagined audience. And what this does is take us further away from our own personal creative vision. And as a result, it takes us further away from creative success. Recently, I worked with a very successful performer who's had huge TV success Uh, sells out theatres for their live shows, uh, all sorts. This person has an incredible creative vision, but their live show had drifted, drifted gradually further away from their creative vision and developed into this series of sort of crowd-pleasing moments that weren't really reflective of or reflective of who that person is, either as a person or, or even as a creative. Now, to be fair, they were honest enough to admit that they felt almost this emotional and creative pain every time they went on stage, but they didn't really know how to change. And my job really, first of all, was to help them regain their creative confidence and then help them build a show that worked for them as a performer, worked for them creatively, but was attractive to an audience. And I'm very happy to say the show did really well on its national tour and its London dates. And the performer now continues to enjoy success with this kind of new but old mindset. And this is not a rare occurrence and it's totally understandable. Making a living is important. It's also stressful. And the pressure that puts on us can really mess with our heads and our creative decision-making process, and especially at the beginning of our creative careers, because it's really difficult to make a living out of what we do. So as time goes on, this stress leads us to become scared of change, and our creative decision-making process starts to falter. However, if we look at the most successful creatives in any field, they're the ones who have developed their own vision, and some of them have even reinvented themselves sometimes. And while we may not all need to become David Bowie, there is definitely a path available to us. And let's not forget also, before David Bowie became actual David Bowie, he was David Jones, and his biggest hit was a song called The Laughing Gnome. Check it out on YouTube. Let me know what you think. So how to resolve all of this? So as a creative, your starting point must always be what you are passionate about, what inspires you personally, and what fires up your own emotions. This is deeply personal. It's almost a visceral feeling that you have about something. And it's not enough for you to kind of like it or not mind something. To start with, you must feel passion. If you love painting portraits of Labradors, then that is what you should do. That is exactly what you should do because you love it. On the other hand, if you're able to paint portraits of Labradors and you can sell them regularly but find no creative pleasure in it, then you need to do some work on your creative decision-making process and wean yourself off the doggy pics. Now, recently, I worked with an amazing female vocalist who's gradually been moving herself away from the traditional wedding band circuit where she's quite well established and does really well. 
Now, her own musical tastes uh, are quite different from what she usually does. In fact, she loves Billie Eilish. She loves Sade, Lana Del Rey. So she's now decided that's the style that she wants to work with. And what makes it great, and I've seen her perform, she's amazing. What makes it great is her passion for the material. And that passion reflects authentically who she is. But even more, from a commercial perspective, it also gives her a massive differentiator or what marketing people might call a USP, a unique selling point. Rather than being the same as many other female singers who might be classed as generalists, she's now the specialist. So look at the field you're creating in and be honest with yourself about what makes you want to do it. If you like, you can create your own manifesto about who you are as an artist and as a creative. You don't need to publish it, but you I mean if you want, you can. But spend time thinking about it and spending that time thinking about what you want to do creatively will help you focus on who you are professionally. Now, back in the day when I was working for Disney Cruise Line, part of my job was to manage the live music program on board and work with new bands. And I remember one particular band that was very talented, but just couldn't connect with the crowd. And I watched loads of their sets, trying to figure it out. And then it dawned on me while they were playing the song La Isla Bonita by Madonna. Now, it's a song that nobody really hates, but also that nobody really loves. In fact, in a Rolling Stone poll, it was voted Madonna's 40th best song, which is still great by anyone else's standards. The problem was not that the song isn't good or whatever it is. The problem was that it wasn't the band's favourite song. It wasn't even their favourite Madonna song. And that is what came through when they played it. When I spoke with the band about this, they told me that what they really loved, the music they really loved, was rock. But because they were on a cruise ship, they thought they couldn't or shouldn't play rock. I suggested they look around at the 35 to 55-year-olds we had on board. I suggested they get their electric guitars out and play the music that they love. They were worried about it, but they did it, and they absolutely stormed it. And the reason they stormed it is because they were playing the music they really loved. And because they really loved it, they were playing it really well. And because of both of these reasons, the audience loved them. They loved that authenticity. Now, we also knew as a company, oh, now we have a genuine and unique rock band rather than just a run of the mill covers band like so many others. This is called added value. And that is what you earn when you get your creative decision making process working properly. By the way, we didn't hear Leslie Benita again that season. If you need creative support with your project or you'd like me to speak at your event, please drop me a line, jasonwardcreative at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Confidently Creative with me, Jason Ward. I would love you to subscribe and please don't forget to send me your feedback and let me know if you would like personalized support with your creative business. You can follow me on Instagram at Jason Wall Creative, where you'll find tips and creative inspiration. Once again, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time on Confidently Creative.